Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I'm going to talk about what to invest in in this game. You know, this used to be the subject of this entire channel. I spent so much time, top 10 to invest in, what to invest in here, what to invest in for Dark Dimension. And the game has gotten a lot simpler now in terms of what to invest in. We basically have a path dictated to us by Scopely. So that makes it a lot easier in certain respects. And I think it leads to some certain obvious points. And I'm going to bring forth a couple of these today in this video. We're going to, I'm going to expand on this more later, but there's a couple, I think, obvious points that I want to talk about today. Obviously, this if you're a beginning player, if you're just new, newer to the game, if you're just getting into the mid game, you know, you're like, hey, I want to, I'm just entering DD2. Well, this may not, you know, be ap applicable to you, but for most players who are starting to think about Doom Raids and thinking about, the uh, end game uh, in terms of, you know, let's say it's, you know, dark, you know, if you're in dark dimension five or you're, you're thinking about apocalypse, th I think this applies to you. So let's just talk about what to build for you. I'm getting a lot of questions right now. People ask me, wait, philosopher, you know, who do you think is good in global for DD five, you know, or, you know, who do I think is, you know, good in the city, you know, city section or for legendary or that sort of thing, or, Hey, philosopher, do you think I should be just putting, you know, teal gear on this team yet or that team yet? And who should I build for Scourge? So here's my advice to you as a starting point. First of all, you need to th take advantage of double dipping wherever possible. And here's what I mean by that. There is an enormous set of requirements that are set out for us now. Basically, we're going to all have the same roster at a certain point in the near future. Instead of giving us like you know, here's your two different, let's say, galactic legends to go for. They're like, here's your one apex character, Apocalypse. Everyone's working towards Apocalypse at some point or another in some way, shape, or form. And so for Apocalypse, for example, I'm going to have to have this entire team at gear tier 17. So realistically, you know, bringing any of them up to gear tier 17 is something I'm just going to have to do whether I want to or not. And so accordingly, accordingly, if I need, uh, for example, for an event or for my Mystic Raids or for any other reason I need to have these characters built up, it's double dipping. I basically do it. I mean, you, I don't want to call it free, but you're basically doing it, you know, for one reason and you're getting another reason as a bonus. Okay. So that's the first thing you need to keep track of. So what, so what does this mean for this game? Well, what I think it means is asking me you know I, why what characters you should bring to dark dimension is pointless at this point you might as well just bring characters that you already are, that you already are forced to build by scopely that you can just double dip on so you know if i'm going to global somebody asked me tonight what's the what should i bring to global for dd5 well let's say you might as well bring a character like wong i mean he's essentially i mean he's not free but he's essentially it's double dipping you basically you gotta build him anyway so you might as well just toss him into dark dimension okay he's not awesome but you know he'll muddle through with him you'll muddle through with agatha echo kate bishop they're good in scourge right because you you have to build everyone's got to build in addition to building those teams that we already mentioned you're gonna have to build dark hold you're gonna have to build you know, um, un the, um, the uh, you know, new Gamma team, right? You're going to have to build the Unlimited X-Men team. You're going to have to build a fourth team. There's additional characters that even, they haven't even told us about yet uh, that we're going to have to build the Gear Tier 17. But on top of all that, everybody has got to build, for example, the Web Warriors. And everybody has got to build the, um, you know, the for this is for the first Scourge. At the very least, like you better if you have two teams, but at the least you need to have a big Web Warriors. And then you also need to have a big Young Avengers. So from my perspective, you know, realistically, if you're bringing your Young Avengers to DD5, that's just double dipping. You're going to need a big Young Avenger anyway, so you might as well get some advantage out of it. All right, so that's my advice to you is view Dark Dimension now as just purely like a sideshow where you get some free gear in exchange for building characters you have to build anyways for other stuff. Now, before I get a flood of comments here, 
double dipping also applies to game modes that you need to get stuff. So right now you need to raid, right? To get, you know, teal gears and ice, uh, blue ISO and all that. Well, <laughs> you, you know what your raid teams are. Those are also dictated by scope. Well, you need to have your Axemen, your secret Avengers. You need to have bionic Avengers. You need to have, um, you know, I use Darkhold with the uh, Dormammu in the mystic section, but you basically, that's kind of dictated, right? So I use Dor Dormhold partly because that's just another sense of double dipping. But like Bionic Avengers, even if they weren't useful as a Scourge team, to me, this is just a team you just got to build, right? Because you need to do well in raids so you can get the teal gear to build up everyone else. Now, you may say, well, okay, Philosopher, I still don't have enough stuff to build everything I need. And that's where there's a, con a concept that I want to you know, introduce to you um, what, I, what I'm going to call liquidity. And it's just, it's a concept that, you know, in real life, you think about in a business all the time. I talk about it with my clients as a lawyer all the time. And what that means is, even if I've got lots of assets, if I've got homes, if I've got, you know, um, in all sorts of stocks and bonds and investments, you always need to have some cash on hand so you can pay the bills, right? So even if you've got it, you know, you don't want to put all your money into your house and not have money to pay the bills. And so similarly with gear, we just don't get enough gear unless you're spending an absolute fortune and mortgaging your house. You're not going to be able to keep up with all of these ridiculously insane requirements. So what do I suggest you do is I suggest that you build in an order that makes some sense for yourself and only build and put gear on when you have to to get something in the game. Right now, you may need the Bionic Avenger so you can blow through the tech raids, right? The tech lanes in the raid. That makes sense. You know, how much you gear your unlimited X-Men depends on how much you think that they're going to matter for you for Crucible or not. But for, you know, other teams, I know a lot of you tell me, look, I just don't have the resources, Philosopher, to go hard in war. And I get that. And so for you... I just think for a lot of those players, this may be a team that they put off. Obviously, there's a double dipping aspect to it where, hey, if I, you know, if I build a big gamma team, it's going to help me in war in addition to being something I already need for Apocalypse. But the point I'm making is you don't need that team today. Unless you're ready to un unlock Apocalypse today, you don't need the team built up today. So this is a, an, a, a, a definitely a double dipping opportunity but you don't. You need to space things things out. It's the same reason why I say hold on on scourge, building scourge teams until you know for sure. Right for the next scourge, we don't know what the best team will be. Probably hero S guardians, but you may need ravagers. Maybe you're going to do a mix of, you know, Thor with the uh, Iron Man and Hulk since that's double dipping there, and you're going to throw in a couple other hero S guardians. Maybe it'll be a team like that. But until we figure it out, just hold your stuff and keep keep your cash. Just like I'm saying, it's this idea of liquidity. Keep your cash, keep your gear in this case, in this game. Keep your gear until you know what you need to spend it on, until you have to spend it. So that's my basic advice. And I think now investment decisions in this game are much easier. Scopely tells us what to build. And the key thing is to try to build as little else as possible because the the price tag is so high, and to only build things when you need it. That's the bottom line. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. If you have comments, questions, cheers, cheers, happy, sad, angry, mad, put it below or go to my Discord. You can also go to my Twitch stream. That is linked below, too.